everyone, this is Maheen and welcome back to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. We're back again with a show where we delve into the critical role of small businesses in bolstering our economy and the importance of supporting local ventures. Today, we're focused on the evolution of marketing technology, the central role of data and the importance of systems integration. Joining us today is Mike Geller, the co-founder and principal technologist at Tegrita, a firm that's revolutionizing small marketing consultancy. With a 15-year career spanning various facets of marketing technology consultancy, Mike is a Ryerson University alum who quickly made his mark in the industry. Tegrita's mission is to empower marketing leaders to unlock the full potential of email marketing and accelerate their pipeline at scale. Today's journey with Mike Geller takes us through the evolving landscape of marketing technology and the foundational importance of data in every strategy that we deploy. As Mike shares his insights on the future of marketing technology and systems integration, let's think about our own ventures. This conversation is more than just an exploration. It is an invitation to innovate and adapt, ensuring that our businesses not only survive, but thrive in the digital age. Hi, Mike. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. How are you? Not too bad. Thank you for having me. Very pleased to have you with us this afternoon. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned again, it's fantastic. And we'd be loving to kind of hearing your experiences and the work that Trigurita is doing. And uh, we're eager to explore your perspectives and your experiences overall. Now, let's begin by uh, learning more about your entrepreneurial journey. And, uh, you know, just as a general remark, uh, embarking on an entrepreneurial venture is a journey filled with lessons and milestones, correct? Uh, But uh, it would be amazing if you could share the story behind founding Tegrita and what inspired you to focus on email marketing consultancy. Yeah, um, so, you know, my Tegrita journey started actually a little bit before that, when I got fired from a job and I kind of went independent. So I've, in terms of consulting, I've always been a consultant all my life, even when I didn't have a consulting job. So, um, you know, out of university, I worked at an agency and we focused on email marketing through segmentation. And it was all manual with Excel and access back in the day. And I, um, founded a company called Eloqua that, um, did this automatically. It, it created marketing technology in an industry that didn't exist yet. Mm-hmm. And I saw it, I'm like, man, that's the future. Mm-hmm. And so I started there um, in 2008, which for those that don't know or don't remember, uh, that was when we had the financial crisis and um, you know where the last major uh, recession hit. So about six months in, um, they cut half of the professional services team, which is what where I was on. And I was like, well, (laughs) I still believe in this. I don't want to stop doing this. And so I went out on my own and it was, you know, very good community. There's a lot of support to, uh, to uh, allow me to start because there's so much risk. And then I ended up partnering with, um, uh, somebody else out of Aliqua that we ultimately ended up founding Integrita together. Mm -hmm. And, What's nice is that we had the time to think about what do we want to call the company, why you want to call it Tegrita, and what are the um, kind of principles behind it. And so um, the thing about consulting is um, it, you know, in the name you have con and insult. Right. And that often happens in a consulting world where you are kind of locked into working with someone or you don't really know what was happening or what am I paying for? There's lack of transparency. And when uh, we wanted to uh, have our consultancy, we wanted to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. wanted it to be an open system based on integrity, based on transparency, based on sharing knowledge. And that's what we did. And that's where the name Tegrita comes from, from the Latin Integritas, Tegrita. And this way, the ideal principle or value of integrity and what it is that you do is built into the, into the name so that it's never forgotten. Right. No, that's be- it's beautiful. And we love the inspiration and motivation behind you finding the platform in the first place. Now, to build on to this a bit more, um, Mike, how did your experiences and background influence Tegrita's approach and values? Well, I've always been a big believer in collaboration. So um, I... <sighs> I know that I don't know everything and I know that there are things that I don't know that I don't know. Mm-hmm. So 
I try to surround myself with people that know more than I do, uh, at least in different areas. Because if I am expected to know everything, then I'm going to be the bottleneck to the business because knowing everything is impossible and it's futile to try. Mm -hmm. Instead, working as a team through collaboration, through joint decision making, that has been a, a successful approach for me. No, your journey, um, you know, from con concept to creation is a testament of the impact of passion and expertise that you have in terms of running a successful business. Now, Mike, uh, let's kind of discuss the future of marketing technology. I mean, the landscape of marketing technology is ever, ever evolving and it's evolving at a very rapid pace. Um, what are the most significant trends you see shaping the future of marketing technology and how should businesses adapt to stay ahead in this field? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to sort of say the obvious answer here, which is AI. Um, it's everywhere now and any marketing technology and every marketing technology that's going to be around five years from now is going to have some sort of um, generative AI or subjective AI or recommendation AI built in. So it's not something that you should fight. It's something that you should embrace carefully, which is a, a key word there. Um, because it's still in its infancy and it's very easy to uh, kind of hand over decision making to to a computer but it, there's still a lot of unknowns around how that'll play out mm -hmm. so there, there's risks associated with that but i'll t say that in general when it comes to marketing technology it has exploded over the last 15 years from you know what's this to literally hundreds of thousands of tools within their sub niche of niches focused on a specific thing. Right. So when you're thinking about investing or staying ahead on the technology side, you want to have a plan and purpose around what you want to do and achieve and whether or not technology will help you do that. Right. Because one of the biggest traps with technology is it's a time suck. Mm -hmm. So if you get something because you think you need it, but you don't know how you're going to use it, then there's going to be an opportunity cost which will ultimately impact your growth negatively. Mm -hmm. no, understanding these uh, you know, trends is crucial for businesses looking to leverage technology in the wrong run for sure. But um, let's kind of discuss data as a foundation, right? Yes. Uh, in today's digital age, data is a pivotal asset for any marketing strategy. Um, Mike, could you elaborate on why data is foundational to marketing success and what strategies do you recommend for businesses to effectively utilize their data? Yeah, so, you know, data is the foundation of everything uh, in our lives. The kind of recommendations that we get, the decisions that we make, it's all based on the data that we have, the data that somebody has, around, has on us. And if you've ever received a wrong recommendation, it's because somebody had the wrong data on you or they derived data and they derived that data based on inaccurate um, uh, foundational data. So you, you want to make sure that you have good, clean data mm -hmm. and that less data is less clean data is better than more data of unknown quality. Right. So you want to clean your data regularly. What does cleaning data even mean? So um, uh, if if you have a record, uh, so like an email address, a uh, person's contact information, uh, and all the data associated with that, if you don't talk to that person, if they don't engage with you, get rid of that data. You don't need it. It reduces your risk from a, a compliance standpoint. Um, it You only want to have the data that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. Ask questions when you're collecting data that have purpose. Is this piece of information, if I ask for industry, but I don't actually care or do anything different by industry, then I'm asking for an additional piece of data that I need to then manage, clean, maintain, that isn't going to add any value to me. Right. So you want to have, again, a, a plan for how you're going to use the data, because data is what decisions are based on. Data is what automation is based on. Even with AI, and especially with AI, it's based on data. And if you feed it bad data, you're going to get bad recommendations. You're going to get bad outcomes. So uh, less is more and uh, clean regularly. Like regularly means um, at least once a year.
Right. No, it's great. The your emphasis on data management really underscores its role in making informed uh decisions as well as strategic marketing efforts. Um Mike, let's kind of discuss systems integration and architecture as well, since we've discussed uh, so much about data. Now, efficient systems integration is key uh, to leveraging technology effectively. Yes. How does systems integration enhance marketing efforts and overall business operations? Yeah. So, you know, the the average company, and I don't know what the breakout is nowadays or for small business versus medium business, whatever, but you know, there's, uh, I think, 20 marketing technologies that the average company has. Mm -hmm. So every single technology has a little bit of data. And if all of these technologies are not integrated, then that data is siloed in each of those technologies. So you're only able to make decisions based on the data that you have. And if you don't have data from multiple sources, from multiple points of interactions between your customers, between your uh, suppliers, between whoever it is that you engage with, you're limiting the possible quality of the kind of decisions that you could make. Right. Now, I, I believe that this, these, this comes with a lot of different challenges, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what challenges do businesses face in achieving seamless integration and how can they overcome them? Yeah. So again, kind of comes with data where you, <laughs> it, data is going to keep coming up. Um, if, if you have, um, if you collect data one way in system A and you collect data in another way in system B, you're going to have to reconcile that. Mm -hmm. That is going to take time, money, effort. And if you multiply that by the number of systems that you have, by the number of data capture points that you have, it you can see how it can become challenging and essentially a time suck, right? So you want to start smart so that you gain efficiencies later. And that's where you want to have a plan for what data am I going to capture? Where is this data going to go? And very importantly, what is my source system? What is my system of record? What is my system of truth? Is it my CRM? Is it my marketing system? Is it, you know, a list of papers I have in a drawer? It has to be something. Hopefully not the last one. No worries. But no, it's, it's, I think it's really important to navigate these challenges uh, in order to achieve or maximize the full potential of the marketing efforts that people are putting in. Um, now, let's kind of tie this into the prenup importance in business partnerships. Yeah. Uh, I mean, navigating partnerships is, can be very complex, right? Uh, especially with businesses and small businesses. Mm -hmm. Mike, uh, you mentioned the importance of having a prenup or shareholder agreements yes. earlier. Could you share more about your experience transi transitioning from a 50 50 partnership partnership to a solo ownership yeah so you know back when i started on my journey um the idea of anything but a 50 50 partnership seemed um alien to me like if you know i believe in collaboration right i believe in all of these things about being in joint decision making and whatnot but the, by definition, the 50-50 partnership means you have to have a unanimous agreement all the time. And that means if one partner is uh, has one particular view and wants to take one particular action, they are uh, essentially um, stalemated by you uh, or your disagreement. And it really is like a marriage when you have a business partnership because you are going to be spending just about as much time with them anyways. And you need to make sure that you do what you can to, to mitigate that risk. Now, what a shareholder agreement does is it, uh, it, it allows you to write out how you want things to be actioned or handled in various events, including uh, separation. How do you buy each other out? And if, it's a lot easier to do these things ahead of time. Um, and in general, right, I would advise against the 50-50 partnership. Like 51-49, you know, would be better because then you have one person that's ultimately able to make a decision mm -hmm. and that will save a lot of uh, arguments um, ar around that. Well, your um, experiences really offers uh, some valuable lessons that people can take part in uh, in terms of navigating, again, the complexities around partnerships and, of course, contributing to the best uh, interest in the business. Uh, now, um, Mike, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs entering into business partnerships? Make sure that this is what you want. Um, 
and understand that the level of commitment that you're providing is not going to be the same as the partner because you are not the same person. You have different lives, you have different obligations. And depending on how your partnership is structured, like a lot of partnerships, you'll have a primary uh, person and then you'll have a few other co-founders. Um, and so uh, depending on the, the share of ownership, everything around expectations, what is the expectation of you, of your time, um, of comp, like what's the future? Are you looking to have an exit? All of these things have to be sorted out. And you ultimately have to believe and trust uh, your partners, like your life depends on it, because in many ways it does. Now, I believe the, our audience would be highly inspired by today's conversation into taking that first step. Uh, but before we conclude, Mike, uh, could you share one piece of advice for our listeners, especially those navigating the complexities of marketing technology? I try. Um, you know, um, where you have opportunities to validate your assumptions, um, challenge your assumptions. If you think I need this, make sure, like I kind of go through that, you know, five whys exercise. Um, do I need this? Why? Because of that, why? And, and you kind of get down to the core and it's, yes, you know what? I really do need this because it will help me uh, increase my efficiency and that will indeed help me with uh, achieving my objectives in terms of growth or marketing performance or whatever it is that you're, that you're looking at. But before you invest in tech, really make sure that you need it and that uh, you have a plan for how you're going to use it uh, wisely. Mike, thank you immensely for joining us today and for sharing a wealth of knowledge with our audience today. We believe that the audience would really learn a lot from today's uh, you know, conversation into helping their businesses propel forward towards great success. So again, thank you for your time. My pleasure. As we approach the conclusion of our session with Mike Geller, let's take a moment to reflect on the actionable insights shared today. The journey towards becoming more data-driven and technologically integrated can really seem daunting, but it's clear that these steps are essential for future success. Let today's conversation inspire you to take the first step. And that was the end of our conversation, where we would also like to extend our gratitude to our partners, exclusive banking partner, RBC, our shipping partner, UPS, our accounting software partner, Zero, and our exclusive email partner, Constant Contact, for their support of the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. To our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Your commitment to growth and innovation is what drives the SME community forward. Don't forget to subscribe to the Canadian SME Small Business Magazine at canadiansme.ca for more insights and strategies. Until then, take care.